Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create animation presets in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, what we're really covering is just creating presets, but I'm gonna be doing it specifically on animation just because it's a little bit easier to show. However, you can use this technique to create presets on any effects that you want so that later on, all you have to do is go to the little presets thing right here and drag and drop them onto your footage or your assets to recreate an effect that you created in the past. That way you don't have to keep recreating it and you can keep it consistent over time. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this, uh, my uh, logo right here and drag it on. So you can see that it's just a PNG file. I'm gonna click on it so we have the effects up here in the effect controls. And then I'm gonna go over into effects and I'm going to go down into transform, which is under the distort tab. You can just search it or you can go video distort to get to it. And then we're gonna drag that onto here. The reason we're using this is so that we can use this little hack that I talked about in one of my other videos where we can turn this off and we can get some motion blur to make it look pretty neat. It also extrapolates the data into an effect instead of onto the sort of the footage or the piece, the asset itself. And that'll help later on so that we can adjust the effect with each and every sort of um, thing that we added onto. That'll make a little bit more sense later on. So what we wanna do is we're gonna go into the transform tab right here. And what we want to do is we're going to be adjusting the scale to create this little pop in effect. So we want to click on the scale right here, drop it down to zero, and then move maybe six frames forward, bring it up to 120, and then three more frames and we wanna drop it back down to 100. And this just makes it come in from nothing and sort of pop into place. So then the next thing we wanna do is we want to click on one of these keyframes. We want to right click and adjust the keyframe to easy out. Sometimes it goes to this screen, sometimes it goes to one where you have to click interpolation um, and then go down to here. So what we're just trying to do right here is just click easy in on these two and that is going to adjust the keyframes so they aren't so linear that they are going to actually sort of slide into place. And you'll see that it adds just a nice little touch where it slows down near the end and it makes it just look overall better and sort of more uh, 2.0, like it looks really clean once you add that onto it. So we have this going, um, we got our basic effect working and that is basically it. We're going to then uncheck this little box here, turn this to 180 and then we are going to get a little bit of motion blur with that as you can see. Just a little, you can see the blur like right there around the edges. And that just, again, makes it look just a touch better because it has motion, so it should have motion blur as well. So we have our effect done. And now we wanna add this to a bunch of different logos or sometimes we have to add it to different stuff and we don't have to keep recreating this. I mean, it only took us like three or four minutes, but if we had to keep recreating it over and over, it might get tiresome. So what we can do is we can just go up to transform right here. We can right click on it and go to save preset. And what we're gonna do is then give it a name. So let's name it the pop in. And we want to anchor it onto the end point. What this basically does is, what are you anchoring the preset on? Is it anchoring it on the scale because, or is it anchoring it on the um, where it begins, which is the end point or where it ends? This, These two sort of preserve the speed while the scale preserves the animation a little bit better. They're kind of hard to describe. So I just play around with them and sort of discover you know what it means to you and if it doesn't work out the best, all you have to do is go back to it, right click and create another preset and change it around and just sort of look into that and feel like what works best for that animation. You can also give it a description um, so that it becomes a preset in itself because you can export these and actually import them into other Premiere Pros. So if you're creating a pack or something, you'd probably wanna create a description. So we're gonna click okay and you'll see that up here in the presets, we have our animation. So if I go ahead and delete this, so now we're just back to regular, we can drag and drop the pop in effect on it and we have our effect right here. So now if I delete this footage and I drag in a completely new logo, the Premiere Pro logo, I can drag the pop in effect on top of it and it does the exact same thing, it pops in. So now this is completely and totally movable. I could drop it on the footage behind and you'll see that it's gonna have a very weird sort of effect, but that actually didn't look half bad with them both coming in at the exact same time. But like I said, you can drag and drop this onto anything now and now we have this pop-in animation thrown on that we can add to anything we want. That is basically it on this. Um, remember that you can just highlight anything in here and right click and you can save it as a preset, drag it onto your footage a little bit later and you don't have to re keep recreating your effects over and over and over again. 
Thanks everyone for joining me for this tutorial. If you want to see more Adobe related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make videos every other day. If you got any questions, comments, or suggestions for future tutorials, those in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, see ya.